absence of both co-chairs, uh, one had another meeting today, and the member will be in a few minutes, but I don't want to call y'all too long for you to be coming in. So we go ahead and call this meeting order. Uh, Charlie, what you want to offer the prayer for us when you start with? Thank you, sir. Okay. I would thank the God for our health and safety. And I'm thanking you again for providing food for us. And with what a life. And I hope we're going to have a peace if we're in the whole room. Amen. 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 Next, approve the minutes from the February 12th meeting. Uh, if everyone did receive a copy of the minutes, uh, either via mail or email, or probably both. Um, if there are any corrections for those minutes, we will entertain that now. Or if not, we will accept a motion to approve the minutes as presented. So moved. We got a quorum. We have six, and of the we have eleven currently on the commission. Who's that? Uh, so we can yeah. mm -hmm. got a motion. Uh, anybody second? Second. All those in favor? Uh, okay. Also, in your package, you receive a copy of today's agenda. Uh, any <coughs> changes to the agenda? Not, we will accept the agenda as presented as well. Through a motion. Through a motion. So moved. Okay. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Before I start the discussion part, two things. I want to kind of uh, update you all some things that have happened. Um, of course, you all have been watching the media, you know. Uh, Mr. Dancer who has been faithful to the commission, and I don't think he missed a meeting since he was appointed to the commission. So thank you for your service there. He has been replaced by Cooper Blackwell, and Cooper is with us today. Uh, so he will be coming on board and, and, and joining us. We're glad to have Cooper. Uh, he's still got a couple of some, um, uh, a couple of pieces of paper or paperwork to complete to make his appointment official, but uh, he was appointed by the, he was agreed by the city council, so we will be welcoming Cooper Blackwell as a representative of the NACCP uh, to the Human Rights Commission. Uh, you can go ahead and say a couple words. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, thank you for the welcome. Uh, I'm Cooper Blackwell. Um, I grew up in Edgemont um, neighborhood on Sycamore Street. I've lived there um, up until I was 18 and went to college. Uh, came back in 2017. And uh, I've been working in the community ever since. I'm a South Rocky Mount resident. Um, right now, I live on Starling Way, and um, I'm the member of the I'm a member of the NAACP, an active member of the NAACP. Um, I have been associated with NAACP and other um, policy groups um, since I was a teenager, um, and I was a part of the youth council that was here as well. <laughs> Um, so I'm happy to be a part and to be able to um, represent the, the concerns um, and comments that are brought by the N people who approach the NAACP as well as you know, other people in the cities and our neighborhoods um, in efforts of working for all citizens. So I'm looking forward to being here. Thank you all. And also let's do an introduction. I, I, you, you may know Everybody, just to make sure we go around, we start with Mr. Ellis here. Lorenzo Ellis. Moses Scotty. Jeffrey Walson. Cynthia Cobb. It was the tail of Ricky Pitt. Okay. <clears throat> Next on the agenda, we have up here discussion and updates. Uh, one thing we're going to talk about and want to share with you. Um, the numerous amount of efforts that the city has embarked 
to make sure all of our residents are aware and hopefully will participate in the upcoming 2020 census. Um, I reported on this, uh, I think, at two meetings before. We started back in probably, I think, uh, September, October. Staff attended meetings in conjunction with Edgecombe County representatives and, and Nash County. Um, because the census is conducted by the county, and Rocky Mountain Club was part of both Edgecombe and Nash. So there's been an ongoing partnership with both counties, and uh, because uh, Rocky Mountain is a very important part of the process because we hold a large number of the population for both counties, and also we have this, and we continue to express the importance of the citizens because it really uh, represents the amount of funding that the city will get, and also the, how the city, the, the state, will be represented on the federal level. So. With that said, we continue to do community outreach. I want to let you know, uh, give you an update of some things that have happened in the last couple of months. Um, we have um, done a lot of things in reference to the media. If you ride through Battle Park, and you might see some, like, well, not, not only Battle Park, but specific locations throughout the city, a white boards up, <coughs> highlighted the uh, 2020 census. Last week, they will probably highlight the International Festival. That's going to change over this week. There are a number of large billboards on both sides of the city, and a digital billboard um, talking about the census. There are started this week, a couple of radio announcements, uh, PSAs are going on. And in addition to that, we have um, brought on board three community outreach specialists to uh, work with the city to help uh, get citizens involved. And I'm proud to say we have one of your, one of our commission members who uh, has temporarily stepped down from the commission just for a couple of months to work part-time as a community outreach specialist for the city. Teresa Stokes, she's the chief with us, and we all very familiar with her. And she's really involved with the, with the community, and we felt that she would be a very good excellent. Uh, uh, asset helping us making sure that um, all the citizens are aware and can answer any questions. So she has joined my two other part-time um, community outreach specialists led by previous city council member Lois Watkins, which is a coordinator, and we also have a representative from the Hispanic community, Michelle Cruz. So they have already started working, uh, trying to get uh, work on projects. And we will hear additional information from them as time goes on. But I just wanted to, to remind you, as you talk to your um, citizens and your neighbors and people in the wards of the section of the town that you represent, uh, next week, a lot of residents, or most residents, will receive the postcard from the census asking them to respond. And again, they're wanting everybody to respond, hopefully, before April 1st, online on your telephone. Teresa, anything that you, you, you want to add or you want to wait till later or what? I just want to say um, it's an honor to be on the Human Relations Commission. Welcome, Cooper. Thanks. So at the same time, uh, the census is very important. Uh, as you know, it does entail federal funding, and during the last census count, um, there were some areas that were undercounted, so we're going to do um, everything possible to reach out to the community and get the community more involved and looking forward um, to being a part of the census as well as coming back on the Human Relations Commission as well. But help us to spread the word. Okay. Any questions or comments regarding the upcoming census? We also have Nehemiah, which is not here today, but Nehemiah Smith, is, he's working with the uh, faith community. And he's got a number of churches involved. Uh, and we know that the, the faith involvement and getting our residents involved is very important. So he, he's, he's helping with that. And uh, at a later meeting, hopefully he will be able to share uh, some things that they're doing also. But we are reaching out and forming as many partnerships as possible. And we want to really make sure that all our residents in the city are are able to respond. You know, there's a lot of needs, and there's not always uh, enough money to go around or enough funding. But as we all know, and as we're telling the community, is that the federal funding that the city receives and each county in the state is based on 
the census count. Highways are built based on the response to the census. Schools are built, community are built, are, are, are built, are built and designed. Uh, companies look at where they're going to put their uh, next location. Uh, all that stuff is uh, information uh, compiled from the, from the census. So I'll pause for a minute. We've had uh, two additional members come in. Uh, our co-chair, Member Williams, and I'll let him <coughs> take over the meeting at this point. <laughs> we, we are. Uh, uh, we just talked about the census, and the next one will be the distance. Okay. Call the youth order. Call the youth order, and we accepted that as a minute, so I'll accept Okay. We, we are official at the, at the moment. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we've done the complex uh, census. That, that's what you also just discussed too. Isn't you? Oh, okay. Okay, aren't you gonna tell us what that is and what's going on with that? Okay, the second item on the agenda, um, we reported at the last meeting uh, that we had or we were getting ready to host the state, actually we could already host it, uh, the State Human Relations Commission, the quality meeting here in Rocky Mountain. Uh, the members were there to help with the welcome and a couple more were able to attend. That was a very successful meeting, the attendance was great. And they actually they really enjoyed coming to Rocky Mount and plus being at the event center. So a couple of weeks later I was called or asked to come to a meeting at Raleigh, the Human Relations um, Division to talk about this statewide project. So that the statewide project um, Yeah, so following the, the meeting we had in January, uh, North Carolina Hinger hosted here in Rocky Mountain. I was invited to a meeting with the North Carolina Human Relations Commission, which is a vision of the Office of Administrative Hearing led by Julian Mann III, who is Director and Chief Administrative Law Judge. Judge Mann presented a proposal to partner with local Human Relations Commissions across the state to host a series of community dialogue conversations based on and around the movie The Hate you, you Give. You may remember back in 2019 that movie came out. It's a movie about African-American youth that was shot by the police. And there's been a format or a discussion process that's been built around after during that movie. The Fayetteville Cumberland County Human Relations Commission sponsored this project twice in 2019. Because of the positive response from the North Carolina Human Relations Commission, we'd like to take this project across the state. So the request has been, they have asked the Rocky Mountain Human Relations Commission if they would, in partnership with the Wilson Human Relations and the Edgecombe County Human Rights Commission, that they would join together and host what would be the first of a series of settings throughout the state. So sometime this fall, they are looking at uh, doing the first one here in, in, in Rocky Mount. So, what would that can, can, can tell of? Most of you remember we did the community conversation for the, based on or, or about the Confederate Monument here in Rocky Mount. There was quite a bit of training that went into that process. Uh, most of you who attended the training, um, the training of a community meeting facilitator. This, this will be a, a, a similar process, but will involve a broader base of people. We're going to include key individuals from the law enforcement community, from Edgecombe and Nash County, and from Wilson County. Uh, and from Tarboro also, because those two additional human relations commission will be involved. And hopefully we will be able to have a couple of our members who were trained facilitators be able to be a part of the process. So it, it will be a much larger, larger setting. It will be an all-day process. And like I say, it will be led by the state human rights commission, partnered with the three local commissions here in this, in this area here consistent of Wilson, Edgecombe County, and Rocky Mountain. Um, 
the format would be opening session during the morning, uh, planning session, setting the ground rules, kind of uh, set up, set the scope. Individual will watch the movie, uh, followed by lunch, and then after lunch, there will be probably maybe two, three, or four breakout <coughs> sessions where there will be a community dialogue based on the content of that movie. The settings will consist of groups up to up to 20. Um, we are hoping to be able to invite at least anywhere from 80 to 100 people. So it should be it shouldn't be hard to get a cross spectrum of uh, people from the community, not only for Rocky Mountain, but Wilson, and it, it's going to count it to be a part of, of this process. Again, we will need representatives from the law enforcement, school system, the faith based community organizations, and other uh, chief <laughs> um, factors in, in the community. Wanted to share that with you to kind of get some feedback from this group here uh, to see if you are something that you would be willing to. Join the staff and hosting, because we would definitely want to make sure that you all are part of the process. And as I said, a number of you were trained as meeting facilitators. And uh, along with, I think, there were two other individuals from the community and probably two or three from the MLK Commission. Archie, the, the film is entitled what now? The Hate You Give. Do you know if that was done by a group out of Wilmington, North Carolina? I'm not sure. Okay, okay. We haven't scheduled a date yet. It's going to be sometime in the, in the fall. And uh, the, the first series of the first session will be here, here, here in Rocky Mount. And they are hoping to identify at least probably maybe four or five sessions across the state. What's the end goal? The end goal is that this is a project that's taken up by the State Human Relations Commission as a uh, dialogue on race. So if you remember, we had a community conversation here about the statute. Just imagine that same format, a similar format, uh, with a larger group, group of people, a set of about 18 to 20, uh, from a cross spectrum of Rocky Mount, Ishion County, and Wilson working in conjunction with the state to work the state. And they want to use this group as a pilot or they want to run cross board at the same time so what's that one Well actually this will be the first session and it will be a, a, a pilot. Uh, so um, as we do a lot of things successful here we are hoping that that, that, that event will be su successful also. I think any dialogue about a race, you know, has its merits. It certainly sounds like a work one and so these three commission groups will be working together. Correct. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. But coordinated by the state. Coordinated by the state. Gotcha. So are you looking at pulling together maybe the chairman for each group to go out first before you set this group? Correct. After you all, I give a commitment from this group here. Uh, the next step will be we will call the meeting, the, the, the three commissions, the three local commissions. We will come together with the chair, uh, president, and those staff is involved and start their planning process. It's also an effort for the State Human Relations Commission to rebuild the partnership with the local commissions across the state. And Rocky Mountain is one of a handful of many commissions that actually have staff, but we have just as many commissions, just like Edgecombe County, that there's no staff. The, the commission is but it's totally volunteer. And so uh, what the New leadership with the state com uh, human relations commission up on the department of administrative hearing. Uh, Judge Bannon thought this would be a good project uh, to kick off to um, we'll, in the current atmosphere that we have across the state now, but also build and strengthen that partnership with the local commissions. Have any of our compatriots from either Wilson or Tarver been through any facilitator training, or will they go through any? Will that rest strictly on us? I'm not sure about Edgecombe County. They probably have or not, but I can uh, find out with, with, with Wilson. Uh, but I, I will say I don't think either one has the depth of table facilitators that we, we, yeah. that we currently have here. 
So we're gonna meet. So they want to meet in Rocky Mount. All the sessions will be held in Rocky Mount. Represent all three: be, Rocky Mount, Wilson, and Edgecombe. There'll be one session starting the fall in mm -hmm. this part of the state, and it will be here in Rocky Mount. Okay. And so the partnership will be in conjunction with the state. Will also consist of the Rocky Mount Commission, the City of Wilson's Human Rights Commission, mm -hmm. and the Edgecombe County Commission. Mm -hmm. So we make sure there's an equal representation of all three. So, so will there be a state rep at these meetings just to... Yes. Mm -hmm. The state office or the Human Rights Commission has a staff. Um, they have a couple attorneys on that staff and it's led by, as I mentioned, they are currently now up in the Office of Administrative Hearing. Uh, and they're uh, led by Judge uh, Julius Mann III. He's the director and chief administrative law judge. So he and his staff will be a part of it mm -hmm. also. And for you all that attended the meeting we had here in January, they were here at, at, at that meeting. Thank you, Mr. Blackwell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so I think it's a relevant uh, opportunity for the city, you know, considering, you know, we've had pockets of disputes. You know, 2018, the Muslim community had an issue with the police. Uh, I think in 2019, we had a lot of conversation um, on social media networks about race. Um, and here in 2020, we're um, talking about Confederate uh, statutes. Um, and also in Raleigh, just last night or yesterday, you know, someone was shot uh, by the police. A boy who was running with the pizza box was shot from behind. Um, by a police officer, um, and there were protests last night that happened downtown Raleigh. So I think um, it's spot on about um, where it's time to have a conversation, and we could be a model for bigger urban areas, um, and which would put us in a map, um, especially when we're talking about money, um, considering it's a census year. Well, that's so, that that's really doesn't need to be voted on, dude. I, I think there's a, a, a. I would say to make it official, we need to go ahead and, 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 and put it to a, a, a second of vote so we can uh, basically say that this commission has signed on to the project and will. Have they been reading through our city council and the respective boards and say it's all the same thing? The, uh, I reported back when I attended the mm -hmm. meeting last month, uh, and my report to the manager, and so yes. Mm -hmm. And their response? I did not get a no from them. So, should and so as the process goes, follow this meeting, I will follow back up and so say the commission has agreed to continue the conversation to okay. move forward. If, if I recall correctly, the last time we did took on this venture, it wasn't only used that we were mandated, but it was a suggestion from the council. From the council. Correct. So I would assume this would also be a suggestion from the council or to the manager asking us to look at look into the process. Correct. Okay. Okay, I'll entertain a motion for this commission to be a part of this endeavor. And Aunt, you may have to help us word it right so the motion is go ahead. Before we make that motion, yes. should we That's get the entertainment should, should we get a consent from the our person of uh, that make the recommendation for us to review this? And then we should take it from that motion. Because what now the way we're doing right now, we're just stepping into a process of our direction. I know you that's what we do some processes. But in one of this nature, this magnitude, I, I think it's just come from those that uh, was commission this commission. Well, let me ask you this now. Since Archie has brought it here, um, does it, does it, um, uh, would, wouldn't it appear as though since he is city staff, that the sit that the powers that be his supervisor. What would you say was right? Right. I but, but but doesn't it or wouldn't you think 
before Archie presented it to this group, he would have covered those bases already. Certainly, I don't think he would come here with something that city managers against. I would, I would prefer that. With who that? Who that? Oh, I think it is going. Yes, sir. I'm confused now. Okay. There's a motion on the floor. Okay, entertaining emotional moment. The confusion that I, the mm -hmm. question that I have, <clears throat> are we on the umber road with the statewide in relation to me? Correct. So, in that regard, what's the problem? Very good. Hmm. And I, I make it obvious this is a problem. I just want to make sure that we follow the proper protocol. Mm -hmm. That is the protocol. And I do believe that since the, since the, uh, the staff of the city is brought to the commission, and it certainly sounds like it's um, the initiative is being implemented by the state, that, um, again, that city staff has obviously given him a nod to go ahead and take this to your group to see if they will buy into it. I think he was asking for his buy-in right now. But we are actually not the ones who are doing it. So I think uh, that the motion should be uh, uh, a motion for us to agree to participate. Uh, we're certainly not saying exactly what it is or anything of that nature. I don't see anything about it really that, I mean, we are a human relations commission. And in our bylaws, I do believe we can kind of make these decisions. As a body, we certainly can. Mm -hmm. And also just to add to that, uh, to relieve any, any concerns that someone may have, remember we're just in the planning plan process. And so uh, un until we get the plan confirmed, <coughs> the agenda and everything, we haven't even set a, a date yet. This is an agreement, a commitment from this commission here to start that process and have that conversation to a plan. Once again, I entertain a motion for the Rocky Mountain Human Relations Commission to pursue this initiative in conjunction with the other county agencies and the state. And somebody will need to actually make that motion. So moved. Okay. Do we have a second? Okay, we have a motion to proper second that HRC, Rocky Mountain HRC get involved in conjunction with the other agencies as well as the state with the initiative that we just discussed here. Are you ready for a question? All of those in favor, let me know by saying aye. Aye. Those who oppose, aye say. Thank you for that. Commission questions and concerns. Um, I know you all have already introduced the new board member. Uh, I know him. He don't know me, though. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. We're certainly glad to have you here. Thank you. Uh, your father is a very good friend of mine and a well-respected individual in this city. And we believe you are, too. Uh, I've kept up with you a little bit here and there. I'm tickled to death when I find out you are on this commission. <laughs> so we're all glad to have you here. Any other questions or concerns? I got one, Archie. Um, I'm, this thing going on with this coronavirus scares me. Um, it honestly does. Um, we um, it's spreading, and there still seems to be a just a lull in responses to it. I'm trying to figure that out. Do y'all realize that stores, are, <clears throat> store shelves are going empty of cleaning supplies and things of that nature? Mm -hmm. They really are, and. Um, the cases are just shooting through the ceiling, actually. Right. Uh, it's a matter of time before we're going to probably be staring in the face here. Um, but I don't know, is anybody feeling what I'm feeling? I don't know if we hear everything is true or not. So you don't know if it's true or not? Uh, that's Man, there's always a risk of it not being true. Yeah. But it's still scary. You know, if you listen to the media, you know, yeah. you're going to make it larger and bigger than I got you. I got you. So, yes, ma'am. I have a concern with um, the housing. I see a lot of junkyards in the communities near where they're actually junkyards. And um, it's ridiculous and it really um, concerns me how um, it's just another junkyard. 
Mm -hmm. People are junking, uh, you know, empty houses, putting all the junk there, um, storing um, their items, refrigerator, oh, refrigerator, oh. There's junk. <laughs> There's junk. I've seen that several places. And, you know, they dumping it in this, you know, in particular places. And that really concerns me. Mm. Is there any location on these streets that you can just call the streets? Or Pine Streets, okay. uh, um, Corner of Pine and Star. Um, what was the other street? Just riding past it, you can okay. see it. It's a whole lot of, you know, junk. Some of the houses have been burnt down, some of them, nobody living in them. And it's a whole lot of old cars and junk. Now, we used to have city ordinances that um, <coughs> were supposed to govern that. They weren't aggressively was, enforced, but... Uh, it was brought to my attention also, um, a gentleman, he has a car repair shop, and he was given a citation, had to remove all the, a lot of those junk cars by a certain time, but he would be charged. But in the community, there are... A, you know, allowing junk to keep accumulating and keep adding junk to it. Mm. It's like they're taking from one location and bringing all their junk to that location, dumping it. Wow. That's the dumpster for it. Mm. Is anybody else seeing this around the city? Oh, yeah. It's, it's everywhere. You know, maybe we can invite somebody from law enforcement to a meeting and get some clarity on what the ordinances are around things like that. I know when I was a police officer, one of the things I used to do on patrol was spot places like that. Mm -hmm. And I would go and get with the city and uh, well, we would push it. One housing code? Yeah, uh, just uh, the debris and so forth is, is against city code. City code. Yeah, but I think it, you know, a lot of people have to complain or something uh, to make that happen. You know, you're right, we do have the community code division which deals with those, with those issues and our department work and have worked real closely with them uh, because of the uh, neighborhood association that we work with also. Uh, but that's a good idea, uh, Lim, we could invite the community code supervisor to come in and share uh, some of the efforts that they're undertaking also some of the challenges that they may uh, encounter in trying to in, in, for some of these uh, properties. I'd be interested in seeing what they had to say. I, I know I received a call from a resident just two weeks ago, and she emailed some photos of, uh, of a driveway or vacant lot in the uh, subdivision that uh, residents were using as a dumping area for uh, old car ties and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and because where it was located, Community Code had not seen it, but because of the resident that called in, and made them aware of it, they went ahead and uh, addressed it. That stuff was removed within about two weeks, and they will continue to keep an eye and hopefully find out who's doing it. So, so it, it takes, you know, again, um, we can get, definitely invite community code to come in and, and share, but just by you mentioning those things like that, and, and we can identify those addresses and pass it on, those things can help as well. That sounds like a good idea. Um, in regards to the, if I may chair, mm -hmm. in regards to the coronavirus, um, I work at a federally qualified health center, um, and there is response um, that's happening in the city um, and across the state. You know, the Governor Cooper declared a state of emergency today, which opened up access to new funds for um, okay. hospitals to address um, the situation. There are 300 um, test kits that the North Carolina Depart Health Department has so far. Um, and they tested about uh, 50 people in the state, um, seven of which were positive for coronavirus, six of them being in Wake County, one in Chatham County. So we don't have any cases of coronavirus down here so far. Um, the symptoms, I think, are fever, coughing, um, and then severe illness. Um, and a lot of people are buying face masks, but the CDC says that that's not really effective. Um, the best way for prevention is just washing your hands for 60, well, they say 20 seconds, but 60 seconds is an adequate time. 
Um, and then keeping away from your touching your face. They say don't touch your face and keep your hands clean. Um, so I think that's a, about all we can do in preparation, you know, right. to tell people not to touch, to wash your hands and not to touch their face. Mm. So that's just some updates from a health center perspective. Gotcha. And that is so hard to do not. Were you about to say something? Oh, no, I was going to okay. say, you know, it's, uh, you're like your mama gave me little kids. So wash your hands. <laughs> In your face. <laughs> and, uh, you know. I think we, if we do that, we'll be fine. Be fine. This is another uh, situation that we're in, and we always seem to come out yeah. better than what we expect. So um, they're going to take stuff off the shelves. You know, they're not going to put it all out at one time. Keep coming mm. back, you might buy something else. That's true. <laughs> so, mm. you know, you can get gas, though, you want to ride yeah. around. Yeah, it's gas. cheap, right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it'll go up five hours when, when you go back. <laughs> so, mm. you know, don't play that game with them. Yeah. Stay safe at home. Mr. Sharon? Yeah, I haven't been to the end of the eviction with you. Was that a wire? What was that now? I haven't been to the end of the eviction. How are we gonna tell? How, how can you tell? You can't. You can't really yeah, you can't really tell unless you know they're experiencing <laughs> fever, cough, or severe Ill illness. And it's one more symptom. Um, but they said it's similar to like a flu. So if somebody's experiencing like severe flu symptoms, they should contact the health department and go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. and, uh, what, what they also say is a fibrous item that actually contract inside your lungs. Mm -hmm. And there's a way you can, it's not a true picture as far as how you know you got it or not. But basically, I had a friend of mine who works for NIH up in DC, and they're monitoring that train right, that strain right now. But if, if I, I won't say it because basically it's not a scientific knowledge what we're going to do with it. But there are some things that you can look at that maybe will help you because it, it, it's a fibrous thing that's inside the lungs. And the breathing is one part of it. That's it. The difficulty of breathing. That's the right. It's an airborne disease, I understand. It's like a cold. Actually, what, you can, what it can happen is you can, it can also be contracted by not just touching, but inside a certain space. Mm -hmm. It travels. That's right. It's an airborne. Right. Because a lot of them, when I have three friends now, one of them had to go back through Italy, but now they they rerouted her. So she's going through Canada to come back home. Oh, wow. uh, you know, a lot of the right flights now, are really? rerouted, you know, rerouted, because that's where a lot of people are picking it up. Gotcha. And overseas studies, um, to cancel that. Um, some students that was overseas and came back, they had it. You know, so they are canceling that in all the colleges overseas studies and uh, with the travel, the airport. They're not saying too much about the train, but on the train the subways also. You can easily catch it in those areas as well. That was good. I got another question concerning something. Yeah, this morning, you know, I wanted to come over here. I talked to him about it. And he told me they closed out all the cafe, the restaurant, mm. and the entry to the city. In Roma. That's what they did for 14 days. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's a oh, while. Wow. Wow. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, in, in regards to kind of test kits, uh -huh. one of the statements that I've read is that a lot of communities are not getting the test kits as quickly as possible. Like, there's a shortage of test kits. Mm -hmm. And so in these communities that where there's already there's, there's difficulty for communities who have uh, maybe low income people who are not, who don't have the best access to health care, <coughs> already speaking. Now, with practically no test kits coming as quickly as these communities are in need of it, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just curious as to what the solution is going to be. Because that's one of the things that they're saying that we're not getting the test kits as quickly as possible. Right. right. So well, you might have people. Test kits for the whole state is kind of low. That's low, very right. low. That's pretty low. Right. Um, and we're already at 70 or 50 of them used already? Yeah, right. So, yeah. So, uh, 
I just think it might be a bigger. <laughs> oh well, here's the art. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Go, 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 go here's an article from ABC 11. State of emergency: North Carolina is expected to get 1,500 more coronavirus test kits next week, but it's a national shortage. Right. That's crazy. That's right. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sharp, I read an article in the paper the other day about the new school system name. And I came away just as confused as I was when I started reading that article. It, it said that, but this is where I thought I read, is that the school board had recently agreed on the name, the Nash County School System. But then I read where it said, but the name will be determined by the legislature, and that the legislature chose the Nash school system. The way, the way, the way that's set up, there's two, there's two uh, names to call. Okay. The legislature has a certain name for all districts. Okay. And it, it's called a unit. Okay. Every, unit every school district calls a unit. The school individual counties themselves name their own. Like okay. ours be Nash County Public Schools. Okay. And then, but from the state legislature, we call Nash County School Unit. Okay. So that, okay. That's, so that's it's, state it's, language. It's, it's that's state language. language. It says language. Gotcha. So our new school district would be our school system would be named what? Nash County Schools. Nash County Public Schools. Nash County Public Schools. Okay. Mr. Rocky Mount is in two counties. Why that can't we just question. go back to Rocky Mount Public School, Nash County Public School, Nash County Public School? Because I still, you know, I, raise and be in <clears throat> Nash County. I just don't see that. That's not fair. Well, and I understand this new name was supposed to take place July 1st this year. And some of the questions that I have actually gotten from parents is, does this mean the kids who live on the Edgecombe County side of Rocky Mountain will no longer be a part of their school system? And I didn't have an answer for them. Uh, the only thing that changes is the name. It's the name, okay. So the, 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 the commitment the to serve all the right my kids is still a commitment. Okay, okay. okay. Is this, so there's, this isn't like a precursor to something coming up? The only, it, the only thing that's changed is the name. name. That be the case. Man. Story in those <laughs> <laughs> but I ain't got a lot of questions about that. I kind of wanted to tell you. Be on top of it. Okay, so it would just be Nash County Schools. Nash County Public Schools. Nash County Public Schools. But the ones in Edgecombe County would be that live in Rocky Mount. They would still be Nash County. Nash County Public Schools. That's the other right. Yes, John. So, that would still be Nash County. No. Would the schools in Edgecombe County still be a part of the Nash County school system? Nash. He said yes. That's what it sounds like. Nothing has changed. It's as simple as nothing has changed. It's <laughs> Nash County Public Schools. That's it. No school has been eliminated or added to. It's Nash County. We still have the same number of public elementary schools, middle mm -hmm. schools, How high schools, and early colleges. So, so they're going to steal Nash County schools. Still going to fund the schools in Edgecombe County. Nothing has changed. <laughs> Nothing has changed. <laughs> Nothing has changed. So in response to your question, Mr. Blackwell, uh, the discussion goes on. Uh, there's still a heated discussion about proportions. I um, understand Nash County doesn't think Edgecombe County is paying their fair share mm -hmm. when it comes to supporting those kids over there. Uh, I don't think that discussion is going away anytime soon. Certainly don't. Anything else? Um, questions or concerns? If not, bar yes, crawl is this weekend, March fourteenth, from two to to from two to nine. There's a What's bar that? It's a bar crawl and a block party. The city council approved for um, downtown businesses to have a block party this okay. weekend from five to nine. Okay. Um, awesome. Awesome. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, how many students how many students drop out? I have no idea. How many students drop out last year? I have no idea. <laughs> what I can do, I can, I'll, I'll follow up and find out for it. Find out for it. Anyway, what do you guys think you're doing for them? Drop out kids. Yeah. I think OIC is, um, OIC got several programs that address those kids' needs, uh, even to the point of uh, channeling some all the way through the diploma program. 
Uh, I don't know anybody. Well, well, several church groups are dealing with them also. Um, uh, the Think Program is supporting them, and um, program that used to be in South Rock Mountain. They moved over to the Peacemakers. Peacemakers is doing something about them. So I think it's quite a bit going on there. Uh, so, and, aren't you? and that's something we can follow back up to let you okay. all know uh, what efforts are the schools involved in will drop out from prevention. And I'm pretty sure that a number of those are going to be We did have a drug raid on Willifus campus today. Mm -hmm. Some kid brought some uh, marijuana to school, <laughs> about a block of it. <laughs> wow. Sure did. Caught it in his pocket. He stole it from his mom's boyfriend. And so. Will put his own record having the drug raid today. Um, that's terrible. Yes, sir, Mr. Dennis. Do you need to adjourn the meeting before I'm not on the board? You need to adjourn the meeting before I say it. Okay. But, Do, uh, also, be, before that, I, I wanted to thank um, everybody that helped us out with the International Festival mm -hmm. this, this past weekend. Uh, we got a great turnout. It, it, it was, it's always great to see uh, the community come together. You got you have so many different <laughs> groups in, in, in this area where they call Rock and Home. And to see them come out and, and, and yes, uh, be a part of that setting, it, it, it's always great. And we got a lot of you all to help and volunteer. Thank you for that. And um, just want to share it. All right. There were some city employees there. They, they, I mean, yeah. I appreciate sure them. Okay. okay. That's what I meant. I know some of them were out. Out of town, some were sick, but yeah, so. Okay. <laughs> any announcements? Not yet, but any, any, anything you want to you suggest? This one. This one? Okay. Do we have any announcements? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. This chairman will be adjourned. Okay. The evening is adjourned. All right, Mr. Chair. Um, yes, sir. Talk about the school issue after the city council meeting last time. I went to a meeting in Talbury because the Edgecombe County Commission, the Edgecombe County School System met. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a series of meetings, and what he's not saying is it's more to the picture. I've heard the same thing. Oh, I mean, you know it is. I mean, this didn't just start. Mm -hmm. What they, uh, if the if Rock and if Edgecombe County don't pay their part, it's a clause in there where they are automatically switch over and I don't want to go into it because I got it on my video I video the meeting I don't like saying stuff like that because it's too crucial yeah. I don't like repeating stuff but it's more common to that to break away totally from Edgecombe and Nash now, and, and it's scary you, you talk about scary yeah. what scary is when they give all the schools to Edgecombe County mm -hmm. you talking about 11 million dollars worth of stuff that they're gonna have to do as far as the buildings, the parking lots, and all that, gonna have to be redone, even down to changing keys to the system, to the to the doors. Mm -hmm. So when you hear the next meeting, because I think Nash County haven't met with the commission yet, and then it's gonna supposed to meet with them. Y'all need to attend these meetings. It, this is something heavy, and people should be hot because we paid all that money through the uh, that referendum that time, uh -huh. and they didn't spend none of that money on Edgecombe County Schools. Wow. You think about it, it was what was it, Pope or Pope that they shut down, yeah. and then they came back and wanted to sell it to somebody that wanted to put a school there. Yeah. So how did it go from not being able to be a school to sell it to be a school? And that was after the right. We went to those meetings. I recall those meetings. So when people yeah. talking about people won't involved, we was involved. Wow. But and then the last thing, but but y'all really need to get on that school thing. But invite the superintendent here. Invite the school board members here. Get your answers from the folk that need to tell it. This HRC committee, I'm happy today because they ain't on the committee no more. Cause I can say and do whatever I want to say and do. <laughs> That's the I, I don't like. I I, I I was basically made to get on the committee, but uh, what I want to say is I don't like titles because I don't like to be held to what I can say and do. So I'm just the happiest on the what that brother's <laughs> on this on this board. But what I don't want y'all to do is get stagnant, and 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 because this 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 commission is very powerful, and Edgecombe County. I don't want to even go into that because that's another whole thing. But I'm familiar with uh, Wilson County because I used to go to their video, their memes and stuff. I used to attend a lot of memes. But, but uh, this commission is very powerful, doing some powerful things. So the discussion a while ago was going to the council. See, now what I saw is this 
Human Relations Commission is going to the council saying, we are willing to do. So then when the council should say, well, if y'all are willing to do it, then let's do it. Yeah. I think you're going back was when you say you ought to go to the council first. Like you said, this is a staff. This is the body. Yeah. So don't get confused with where you're staying. And y'all around the table, you got to speak up. When you, when you hear stuff like that, put it in perspective. Because I, I, I think highly of this commission. Because like I said, I've been dealing with uh, Fallen since the 80s. This is where I started out at before I started going to the council meeting. But I, I, I've been bragging about this commission and the Human Relations Commission in Rocky Mount. Because I'm going to go to Tarboro. And now since y'all inviting Edgecombe County, they're going to have to pick it up. Wow. <laughs> sure, yeah. So well, appreciate always, you for saying. Yes, yeah, sir. I've saying. Always, the meeting is adjourned, guys. I've always been of the opinion that if Archie brought it here, that executive staff has already given him to go ahead. I yeah, I don't remind, think he's crazy enough. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to remind everyone again that you will be receiving a notice from the census within the next few days. Please, if you um, would go ahead and answer the questions and submit it back and get your family and friends and neighbors to do the same you will not have to be uh, concerned about someone coming to your door our goal is to get everyone to respond in those um, first mailings so that we can get as many people to participate as possible since the area was undercounted and that was a lot of federal money that the city missed out on thank you and i'll be back soon <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.